work. Love home cooking. But how do we find temperature? For sorry, I'm late, Charlie. Sorry, I'm late. A Mana Touchmatic 2 radar range. The first microwave oven with a memory. Available at Home Furniture and Appliance, 400 South Duff and Ames. Open weeknights till 9. The best things in life are here just for you. The best things in life are here on Pike. Turn on Pike Country Close Up on Pike TV. Do you know the significance of the caucuses, how they work? They just debates to see which, what the candidates uh, are supporting and what they believe in. Of the presidential elections, just um, who's ahead right now. No, I don't. You have any idea the significance of them? No, I don't. That's for the count of the, for the um, polls and stuff like that, isn't it? Don't ask me. No idea. No idea. Oh, jeez, I should. I've, um, is that, <laughs> is that to initiate to go to the primaries? People that get involved? I have no idea. <laughs> My dad would kill me if he knew that. <laughs> well, it's picking the candidates for the different uh, parties. Well, it's when the different candidates uh, discuss their policies and things that they uh, uh, will talk about when they're running or uh, their delegates will be discussing, I suppose. I don't, I'm not really sure. I'm embarrassed to say. <laughs> uh, I, um, not really. <laughs> Do you have any idea? Uh -uh. Uh, I'm not even real sure. <laughs> oh, mercy. Afraid not. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't think so. I know it's, a, uh, it's something that you go and vote at. I, that's about all I know about it. It's in January. <laughs> the Iowa caucuses are the beginnings of the party uh, decisions on presidential and senatorial candidates. Well, not exactly. Right. Just a popular vote, that's what I'd say. They're very important in determining, or the feel at least, of who this candidate for the presidency perhaps might be, who would be best supported. What the Iowa caucuses are. Ah, yes, they're held in January, and they're to help decide the candidates for election. How do they work? Ah, that's something I want to find out. I'm and indeed, tonight we will find out how the Iowa caucuses work. Good evening. I'm James Baker. The Iowa caucuses will be held January 21st. 2,531 of them, one for each precinct in the state. Each caucus elects delegates to the 99 county convention scheduled for March. These county meetings generate delegates to the six congressional conventions and to the state party conventions, which in turn elect national convention delegates. But it all starts at the precinct level, and tonight we'll take a look at what happens there. We will see mock caucuses staged by Story County Republicans and Democrats. Then we'll talk to the state chairman from each party. But first, here's a look at a Democratic mock caucus. Okay, it's 8.30 p.m. now, and it's time for us to elect the delegates from this precinct. There will be five persons elected from this precinct to go to the county convention. Are there any groups that want to be represented and be recognized? Yes. I'd like to uh, be a Jefferson supporter. A Jefferson supporter? Any other groups? I'd like to support Andrew Jackson. Andrew Jackson, Jefferson. I'd like to go as uncommitted. Okay, and uncommitted, and I'm going to line myself as Susan B. Anthony. Okay. <laughs> I'd like everybody then to congregate in groups, you know, based on Jackson, Jefferson, Anthony, and the uncommitted. Why don't we have the Jack Jackson group over here? Okay, how about Jefferson over here? Okay, all the Jackson people, if they can get over here. Jefferson's over here. Right, right. Okay. Excellent. Jackson. Oh, you're going to be a Jefferson yeah. too? Right on. Here. I need the right one. Well, I know it. I know it. They're going to be a Jefferson. Right? No, you're right. Okay. How many people are there? Okay, we've got one. Jefferson group. What? Four. How many people in the Jefferson group? Four. Oh, all right. Four people there. Okay. The Jackson. Four of, oh. us. Four of us. Four of us. Four of us. Mm. Oh, Same right. year. Uncommitted. Two. Two uncommitted. And then one for Let's go after the afternoon. Okay, we're allowed to have five people. And uh, five delegates. She's, she's five delegates elected. Yeah. The Anthony group does not have enough support in order to elect a delegate. 
Okay. So right now, the way it breaks down, we've got two people, two delegates from the Jefferson group, two people from the Jackson group, okay. and the uncommitted are allotted one delegate at this point. So what I'd like you to do is to break into groups and try to rearrange and come up with the five delegates. To, You're, to allow the, the Anthony person to yeah, have one. The Anthony person. It gives you give a chance. chance to kind of reallocate, okay? We're going to stay on group. That's right. Well, I think well, you ought to be. Well, yeah. Yeah. You never make up listen, their minds. Listen, listen uh, yeah. if you get you, Jackson is a person that will lead this country yeah. Yeah. to a position where we'll, okay. we'll have no, no, no. settlements all the way to the Rocky Mountains. Okay. You mark my word. Come on over to the Jackson Jefferson is a man who's for Why should I do that? First. Well, because you can't uh, get a delegate. Soldier, you can't be a delegate with only one of you elected. You can come over to us as long as you go with us on the first talk to my Jefferson. Uh, you don't need to talk to your own here. choice afterwards. See what they'll offer? Well, if I go and commit it, I can. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll go, well, well, get a delegate. We, yes, we, we want to be delegates. You, you, okay. you, you know what? You elect like us delegates and we'll come to your group. group. Here's, here's another thing, too. You know, if you want to keep this country. Okay, would everybody go back to your seats? Okay. Sit down. Go back to our seats. Well, I think we should have a little bit more time. I think everybody's pretty much made up their minds, haven't they? Right. Okay. So, yeah. Jackson, what did we do? Yeah. 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 yeah, we'd like a chance. Five. 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 Yeah. Some yeah. Things here. We have seven people. Seven, seven people. people. Okay. Seven people. Seven. Seven. How many guys. then are left in the, ju the Jefferson group? We're supporting the loser. We can't okay. help that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, based on that then, the Jackson people will be entitled to three delegates to the county convention. Okay? And the Jefferson people will get... Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I was going to say. Okay. When we, so we have a representative body when we go to the county convention, okay? And I'll give you whatever time it takes to elect the people from your groups. Three from Jackson and two from the Je Jefferson group. Okay? Okay. 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 Now, how about how are we going to work? I'm going to be out of town. I'm going to be out of town. Well, I think we'll have to. Yeah, he's like uncommitted. All right. He's got to be out of town. He's got to have one. 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 You promised us one anyway when we joined this group. I promised to vote for one of you. Right. And that's him. All right. So I'll vote for one. Okay. Okay. I would like to run too. I got persuaded from Anthony. I would like to have to. Would Rich, would you like to run? Okay, I think I will. Yeah. Then I think we'll have to vote. That's right. Uh, all those in favor? Can we all just get one vote here? You get yes, three votes. So. You can vote for three, three for three people only. Everyone only right. vote for three. It's okay, only let's just three. go through and see. Okay. 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 Somebody want to keep track of okay. those papers? Are you, are you running? I don't babe? think we need to. We're not running, right? No. Okay, okay. we'll all, do it. We have Nancy, Rich, okay. Victoria, Doug. 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 Okay. okay, four okay. people. Okay. All those who, and you can vote for three. Right, so those who are for... Three times? <laughs> no. no, you have to vote no. Those three who, who are for Doug, <laughs> raise your hand. Okay. I have to, I committed <laughs> yeah. to vote for him. For when okay, Doug's in. One, yeah. two, three. Unanimously. Okay, all for Victoria. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Now uh, for Nancy. <laughs> Four for Nancy. Four for Nancy. Okay. Okay. Only three. Now for Rich. Rich. Three. Three. All right. So four, four, four to three. So Nancy's okay. okay. so okay. okay. the delegate. Okay. Nancy's the delegate. Doug, Victoria, and Nancy. Yeah. Are, we have three delegates. Now we have to, we have to nominate somebody mm -hmm. in the committee. So mm -hmm. the committee on committees and the platform. Mm -hmm. right? um, we do that. We get into the large. We do that. The large. All right. Okay. So we have our delegates. And all delegates. Obviously, time does not permit us to present a complete caucus, but these brief looks do afford us a taste of the flavor of them. 
Each party tries to hold its caucuses in public buildings, but in some cases, private homes are used, as we saw with this Democratic mock caucus. The Republican mock caucus coming up next was held at the communications building on the ISU campus. Distinct differences exist between Democratic and Republican caucuses, not only in terms of goals, but also in terms of style. Watch. First of all, we have to uh, select two precinct committee persons to represent our precinct on the Story County Republican Central Committee. We have to poll all those present this evening to see what their presidential preferences are, and we'll get to that in a moment. We have to elect delegates to the Story County Convention, and we have to select nominees to the state statutory and presidential conventions as well as the district counterparts for uh, Congressional District Number 5. We also select junior delegates, uh, if there are uh, any nominees for that. Uh, we will then turn our attention to the debate, and discussion, and vote on various issues of local, state, and federal interest to form the backbone for the party's platform. And then finally, we will get some names of people who want to work as election judges. Uh, and let me give you a list of our present candidates. And you have a ballot before you already on which you may then cast your preference for either Mr. Scranton, Mr. Rockefeller, Mr. Cabot Lodge, Mr. Romney, Mr. Hoover, or Mr. Eisenhower. Or you may vote as an undecided, or if you so choose, you may submit another name. And if you would cast your ballots now on behalf of uh, your, can your uh, chosen candidate, Elizabeth will pick up the ballots and then tally them and give us a report in a little bit. The significance of the ballot is to give an indication of the relative standing of the various candidates in the Iowa caucuses tonight. I wonder if you could give us the results of the presidential preference poll so we can interweave that with, uh, with what's going on. We have two votes for Scranton. We have six votes for Eisenhower, one vote for Lodge, and one vote for Hoover. OK, thank you very much. You heard the results. And those will be the results that will be phoned in immediately by Elizabeth to state headquarters uh, to be reported uh, by the media yet this evening. We'll move on to uh, the next item of business, and that is the selection of the two precinct committee persons. And at this time, I would like to receive nominations, and anyone here at the caucus is entitled to vote for two such persons. The responsibility of the precinct committee person is, of course, to extend the political organization down to the grassroots level in the neighborhood in which that precinct committee person uh, lives, uh, to lead the organizational effort on behalf of the, of the party, uh, to assist in registering voters, uh, to be a voting member of the Republican Central Committee at the county level, and to conduct precinct caucuses such as we're going through tonight, and also, of course, to assist in all other party activities, fundraising, and so on, of a general nature. Mr. Chairman, I would nominate Ann Palmer as a committee woman from this precinct. OK, Ann Palmer has been nominated as precinct committee person. And I might add, at this particular point, uh, we can elect uh, two women, two men, a man and a woman. It doesn't have to be any, any combination. Uh, I, could, I could nominate Ed Jones, then. Yes, you could. Well, I'd like to do that. OK, Ed She's Jones has been nominated, and, and Ann Palmer. Are there any other nominations? I'd like to nominate Dan Griffin. OK, Dan Griffin has been nominated. Any other nominations for precinct committee persons? Mr. Chairman, I would move that nominations cease. Okay, it's been moved that nominations cease. Second. That's been seconded. Uh, shall we vote on that aspect first? Uh, the, the move to cease nominations. All those in favor, say aye, please. Aye. aye. All those opposed, no. The nominations have ceased. 
Now, who has a list of nominees, if Iris would read that back to us? Uh, Ann Palmer, Ed Jones, and Dan Griffin. Okay. We have three persons nominated. Uh, you are entitled to vote for two persons, so please cast your ballot for two persons. If I could have uh, Cheryl Wisenand and uh, Reed Crawford act as temporary tellers for that particular process, I would appreciate your picking up the ballots and counting to give us the results ultimately. The results are Palmer and Griffin. You've heard the results. Dan <coughs> Griffin and Ann Palmer are your new precinct committee persons. We'll be back in a moment to talk about the significance of the Iowa caucuses with the state Republican Party Chairman Steve Roberts and the state Democratic Party Chairman Ed Campbell. So don't go away. The plight of the two and a half million sick and starving Cambodian refugees has been a nagging, emotional, consciousness-raising tragedy that has sparked worldwide concern. And on our next show, we'll meet two American Congresswomen who have just returned from first-hand examination of the horrendous conditions in Thailand. We'll talk about what's being done for the refugees and the political stumbling blocks that these women have been able to cut through to get help for the refugees. Join us for this important... Wednesday morning at 9 on 5. When you chew juicy fruit, you're gonna love that juicy flavor. Juicy fruit's the flavor lovers come. It's one of a kind with a flavor bright as sunshine. Juicy fruit's the flavor lovers come. Love that luscious burst of flavor in every pack you pick. In every sweet taste and fascinating stick. Come on, chew juicy fruit and you'll love that juicy flavor. Juicy fruit's the flavor lovers come. The Ames Festival, Iowa's most exciting musical event, is celebrating its gala 10th anniversary. Membership in the Festival Association brings you previews of the world's greatest orchestras, receptions with visiting artists, and priority in ordering your tickets. For membership information, write Post Office Box 1243, Ames, Iowa, 50011, or you can telephone area code 515-294-3213. On my immediate left is Steve Roberts, the state Republican Party chairman, and on his left, Ed Campbell, the state Democratic Party chairman. Gentlemen, where did the Iowa caucuses come from, and why are they important? Well, they, uh, they come from the Iowa statutes. Uh, they're requ they're the process required under Iowa law for um, selection of delegates to the uh, respective national conventions. They're important. Uh, uh, initially, because they're the process to select our delegates to the National Convention, but they become uh, more important uh, this year because uh, they are the first test, official test in the nation of uh, strength of presidential candidates. And secondly, I think because uh, Jimmy Carter uh, got his start in Iowa in 1976. Only, well, let's say, less than 2% of the national delegates, or the delegates to the National Republican uh, convention come from Iowa. Less than 1% of the Democrat, Democratic delegation to the National Convention comes from Iowa. So what's the significance? Well, I think it's significant from the standpoint that uh, in Iowa that we, I think, have a microcosm of this country. And I think because our system is probably more participatory and we start early, we go through quite a process of precinct, county, district, and state conventions whereby people have to really commit themselves to participate not only for a candidate but for a given issue. So I think that's why the, the media, the candidates, and the political parties have really focused in on Iowa as sort of a model of the caucus system in the uh, United States as we know it today. A lot of folks have been talking about the real significance uh, as being a test of campaign organization. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. It, it, it's an organizational effort. Uh, all the things that, that go in, the extras, the, uh, the media, the advertising, the telephoning, it's all organization. That's what it is. What are the major differences between the Republican caucuses and the Democratic caucuses, from your points of view? Well, I think the, the major differences between uh, the uh, Democratic caucuses is versus the Republican caucuses is that we actually select delegates. In other words, if you're selected at your precinct caucus, you are in fact the delegate to the county convention representing 
a candidate of your preference or choice whereby in the Republican Party it's a straw poll. Uh, secondly, I think that uh, ours is uh, sort of open. In other words, when you break down into a preference group, you know exactly where Ed Campbell is when he goes over in the corner with his particular preference group. I think in the Republican Party, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you do it on a written ballot so that no one really knows where you are or how you voted or whatever. And uh, I think those are probably the two major differences that we have in the caucus system. Uh, there's no question that we that we don't use the proportional representation, but we do elect delegates to the uh, to the county convention, uh, just like the Democrats do. The only difference is that uh, you may or may not know where those delegates stand, and you're if you're in the minority in your particular caucus, you're not necessarily entitled uh, to a delegate like the Democratic system. Um, Secondly, as far as how those delegates are selected, they can be done uh, either by um, uh, secret ballot, as Ed suggests, but that's up to the caucus. It could be a situation where everybody uh, votes by hands or standing up for who they're for. It's not required that we do a secret ballot. I think there's probably one other significant thing that ours is different quite a bit from the Republicans, and that is that we have to select, 50% uh, have to be men and women. They have to be equally balanced. And uh, I think that has been mandated this time, whereby before we had to use what they called all feasible effort. Mm -hmm. Now you must have or shall have 50% men, 50% women at all levels, plus we have what we call the affirmative action, whereby we have to give strong uh, a preference to uh, uh, certain groups, for example, blacks, Chicanos, or whatever it might be. And if we don't do that, we can challenge, for example, that delegation or the delegates selected at whatever level it might be. We, I'd, I'd like to uh, make one comment. We, we very strongly encourage women to, to serve. We do not have any requirement of a 50 percent uh, break, but we have a strong uh, in our rules to have women delegates and also on minorities as well. Someone wants to participate. Uh, what about eligibility? How do they know whether they're eligible to participate in a precinct caucus and what do they go through to find out? The eligibility requirements are uh, relatively simple. You've got to be a resident of the state of Iowa and you have to be a resident of the precinct uh, to which you're going and you have to indicate your intent um, to be a Republican or a Democrat. That does not mean you have to be a registered Republican or a registered Democrat at the time you go to the caucus. You just have to have the intent to be that. You might be something else, uh, independent or other party. Okay. Basically the same, yeah. Okay. How does one find out where a precinct caucus is being held in their precinct? How can they find out? Well, there has to be public notice in both parties, which is also required by the statute, to allow people to know the time, the place, uh, and the location, and also uh, they have to be in public places. Now, I think it's by next Monday is usually sort of the deadline whereby most of the uh, papers and the other media will put out the exact location of the precinct caucuses. I noticed today I think that uh, Polk County Republicans had theirs in the paper I think this morning, the public notice of the locations of all the caucuses. Some small communities, for example, they just have to put out public notice maybe through a press release uh, where others are, are paid for. But public notice must be put out well in advance so people know where, where they have to go. And I think in most cases, they usually go uh, where they vote. Okay. Schools, churches, places like that. Mr. Roberts, what effect did the Republican debates, in your opinion, have on all this process? I think it had a tremendous effect uh, for Iowans generally and the Republican, uh, Republicans in particular. It gave uh, an opportunity for uh, people who are going to have to make up their minds uh, in the next couple of weeks, a chance to see most of the major candidates. It was a tremendous boost for the Iowa uh, Republican Party. Uh, I, a lot of people talk about how proud they were of all the candidates, and uh, it was just a, a great show for us. What effect? on the caucuses is the fact that the Democrats did not debate this year. <laughs> well, I think it was more one of disappointment than anything else. Uh, I don't think it's going to have any real effect at all on the turnout at the caucuses at all. Do you think the national media attention on the caucuses stimulate caucus activity, particularly here in Iowa? Awful I, lot has been said. I think it does to a certain extent because it's sort of a 
political hype that people want to be a part of a system that that's on television and the newspapers and the radio and feel part of that system. I think it's good and healthy for, for, for both our parties in Iowa because it just means that we get more people into the political system. And the more people we get in the system, the more participation we get, and it just makes for a better two-party system in the state of Iowa. So I think it's great. I would agree. All right, sir. What's the most misunderstood fact about the caucuses? I would say uh, that uh, this is some secret type of process that uh, you're, you're not welcome to attend. It's just for party regulars, whoever that might be, when in fact uh, both of us uh, very, very much would like every Iowan to participate in one of the two uh, party caucuses and uh, or would urge people that are independent to decide to go with one of the two parties. I've often said I'd rather have people decide to be uh, Democrats than independents because I believe in the two-party system. We have two strong parties in Iowa and we need more people. We want people to participate. Anything from your perspective? I would just sort of echo a little bit more what Steve had to say and that is that the people who are the real losers in the caucus system in Iowa are the independent voters because what they're saying to the Republicans and Democrats of this state, you go ahead, you select your delegates, you select the people who are going to be the nominees of your party, and then we'll come back in and plug into your system in November, and we'll help you elect one or the other. So they really missed the boat. In fact, a lot of our own people missed the boat when they just turn it over to, say, 35 or 50,000 Democrats and say, you go ahead, you put it together, you select them, and then we'll plug back in again. The, it's about as open a system as you can find that we have in the state of Iowa in the two-party system, and I think people really miss the boat when they don't participate. I think something interesting that I learned from uh, researching this and reporting on with this assignment is that uh, 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 both parties seem to be pushing the idea that indeed those who are elected uh, as delegates uh, to the county conventions at the precinct level could very possibly go to the national conventions, which is a lot of process away, uh, come election time or convention time? Well, there's certainly that, uh, that prospect. Uh, now, of course, we only have 37 delegates to the National Convention, but, but even beyond that, I, I like to suggest to people that uh, because this is so early and because the eyes of the nation, and for that matter, the world, are on Iowa, that this is an opportunity to have an effect way beyond our numbers on uh, the selection of the next president of the United States. What must a candidate show in a precinct caucus to be, uh, for, uh, for that caucus to give him a good showing? Well, in, in the Democratic Party, we already determine how many delegates are going to be allocated to that particular precinct. So the numbers themselves of attendees make no difference. For example, if uh, precinct one has five delegates, precinct two has five delegates. A hundred people could elect those five as well as 20 in precinct 2. So the numbers aren't uh, as important in our system. It's the delegate strength that we're talking about. Got about 15 seconds. <laughs> well, I, I think uh, uh, numbers are important in our system. Of course, ultimately, uh, delegates are too. All right, sir. Thank you both for joining us tonight. We hope that cleared things up a little bit about the Iowa caucuses. Good night, and thanks for watching.